Welcome back and <clears throat> crank it up for <laughs> some straight race coverage. Not a lot of fat on this video today. One race, deep dive, one and done. We are vir virtually joined this early morning at Autodromo Jose Carlos Pace, also known as Interlagos. Jose Carlos Pace was a Formula One driver who competed in 73 Grand Prix between 1972 and 1977, winning here in Sao Paulo the 1975 Brazilian Grand Prix. Pace perished in a light aircraft accident in 1977, and the track was dedicated to his honor in 1985. I love this track. Very fitting of my driving style and my car of choice, the Group 4 Subaru. As you know, I'm a Group 4 technician. I've, this is the third Group 4 race I've done this season, and I have yet to do a Group 3 race. <laughs> um, funnily enough, as you know, we're underpowered in the manufacturer series. But this car excels at railing corners, and being a WRX, it's not scared of curbing either. I've shot a couple photos we're gonna look at at key points around the track where I'll be looking to either gain time or not lose it. <laughs> um, and we'll also talk a little bit about the difference in strategy. Some of these other manufacturers are going to be approaching this race much differently than we will be. The power issue is considerable, um, particularly here, because this track has a few straights and elevation gain um, to consider, which the car does well with elevation gain in terms of suspension, but the motor doesn't like it. We had a user error and we're not able to capture our qualifying lap or the qualifier before the race. So we're just gonna kind of walk you through what the goal was. So you're looking at the track here. You can see the first straight, you can see the finish line there at the left edge of the track. The first section of corners there is called the Senna S. You're looking at the footage of it right now, actually. This is the entrance into the Senna S. The Senna S is a descending S-curve where entry is key, culminating in a long left-hander called the Sun Curve. Here where you can see some of the curbing, you can actually see the texture of the asphalt. This is gonna help you maintain grip when you're going around a corner. You can use them to kind of slingshot you around. Following the sun curve, you're on the opposite straight, seen here. Succeeded by two downhill left-handers called the Lakes Descent. Turns four and five. Again, the curbing, very important there. And then into the infield. Turns six through 13. Home of the Subaru, which responds really well to railing the blue groove through here. I got multiple places I can make moves if I come up on people. And if there's open air, I can gain back lap time that I'm losing on the straights. I will be pitting, which not a lot of people will be doing in this race, specifically so that I can have sticky rubber with which to be aggressive in here to make moves or gain back time. And that all empties into Cafe Corner here, which we're looking at in the reverse. So it's actually a left-hander going up the hill. Again, curbing very important. And then it's just stay to the left to minimize track distance uh, up to the pits and then to the bleachers. And that concludes the lap around Autodromo Jose Carlos Pace, a.k.a. Interlagos. We'll take a look now at a couple photos, just pointing out, again, what you'll see during the race, a couple key areas of the track where I'm specifically going to be focused, whether they're areas in which I'm planning on making a move or areas that I commonly get kind of wrong and that heavily affect lap time. Here we're looking at the entrance into the Senna S, which is very important, and you want to carry a lot of speed cut that second right-hander, and then again get to the inside on the curb for sun curve, out onto the opposite straight. As you come down the opposite straight, the breaking point into the lake's descent is also very important because those are off-camber turns, so it's easy to scrub wide. You ideally want to be on the inside and grab this curb, again curbing, to hook you around. If you get it just right, coming through the second section of lake's descent, you should catch that inside curb, and then it's on to the infield into the horseshoe, right-hander, kind of hug to the inside, make sure to get the curb on entrance and exit, and then party. Where Gran Turismo really feels like a video game to me. Um, on this, all this elevation change and sweeping corners and switchbacks, it honestly feels like trails. Stunt the groove. There's really no sense in walking you through all that can be done here. It's, it's a freestyle. While there is a fastest line, there's a lot of options also. Coming out of the dive right here, and then into the junction, Long sweeping left-hander, grab the curb, slingshot around. 
up towards Cafe Corner again, inside curb. Make sure you get a good exit because it's an elevation climb up the hill onto the back straight. So any mistakes on Cafe Corner will be magnified all the way up the pits and through the bleacher straight. Taking a gander at the race details. Interlagos, 15 laps. It's eight times tire wear and five times fuel consumption. Now, a lot of the people that are in other cars are going to be doing a fuel saving race where they're going to be short shifting and saving as much fuel as they can to get around because their low end torque is great enough that it can propel them around the track fairly quickly. That is not the case in the Group 4 Subaru. I tested it both ways. It was about the same as it pertained to fuel, but was completely different regarding tires. I would much rather have the fuel and the stickiness to be super aggressive and pounce uh, to make this race happen, as opposed to just hoping to stay in the slipstream and slowly get dragged along. Quick peek at our standings as they are currently before the race. We're in fifth overall. It's about time we do a race. You can see we've skipped a couple there. Group four is back. Let's do it. Straight into the pre-race lobby. Squ skipping past qualifying. We ended up in P6. We didn't get slipstream on the first part of the lap, but we did the second. I expect it to be about in P6. 170 points on offer for first place. And plenty of other points on offer for mid-pack finishes too. I think I'll be able to get an improvement in my season on this race. Here we go. Intro. Round five. Take a quick fly down the grid. We're not going to be looking at any other replays today. I did, did stop and look and see how everybody else finished. There was a number of people, Salient Shrimp being one of them, who did very well. We kind of mirrored each other's performance, albeit Salient Shrimp made an even better go of it and ends up being a factor in our race. Our friend Simply Amazing there. Uh, this, this race, I saw DNQ'd. I didn't go back and see what that was regarding. Into the car, flip through the options, make sure everything's set. As we pull away, I'm just thinking that even though this straight is short here, I could still get caught, particularly with the McLaren behind me. Uh, not trying to have the get past on the first lap repeat this race. So as the race starts, a little wait to shift, make sure we get a good little launch there. Jump into the slipstream, a couple peaks behind. I see he's warming up his tires, okay. That's good. So again, this isn't a absolute top split lobby in the North American region, but it's getting real close. So I don't expect to see anybody do anything too terribly crazy into the first corner, particularly with the rolling start. Coming here through Sun Curve, onto the opposite straight in the back. Still warming our tires up a little bit. Sarah Gore warming up the pipes. Coming into the lake's descent. Again, getting this breaking point just right. I send that a little deep, but avoid a penalty. Still able to tuck back in for the exit. Now I got a slipstream here, and there's already a gap behind. We about broke the slip. I'm pulling right up onto Ivan here in the Jaguar, which is probably going to be faster than me in straights by a good bit so I'm not going to force any moves here again lap one he has not he's at at risk of losing the slip ahead I don't want to lose a slip I do not want anyone to break away ideally um, again because I'm planning on shredding my tires so I'm out here running hot laps immediately I'll uh I gotta wait and see if I do I need to pass if I can we'll just slot in and see how it goes coming down the first straight. I still have his slipstream. So if I have to do a move into turn one, we'll see if I have enough grunt. You can see even in the slipstream against the Jaguar, I don't have, I'm not short shifting either, revving the car out as planned. And since we're not able to get a good enough run to make a move on the Jaguar, I'm gonna move over to the right, break myself out of the slipstream, communicate to Ivan, I'm not gonna do anything drastic. Let's just try to get through as quick as possible. I don't wanna get caught from behind. Entry is good on the curb. Hook you around a little bit, shift early. Could have cut that a little more. It's all right, stay full throttle for this. If you can stay on the curb, it helps to hook you around the corner a little. Missed it there, but not so far that we ended up having to go wide. Quick little short peek behind. I can see they're side by side, that's good. A little battling behind, I still have the slip ahead. We've definitely broken free. You can see on the left-hand side there, 1.1 seconds to the driver behind me. Slipstream is three quarters of a second, 0.75. We're just in the slipstream of Ivan still, and I 
don't, I can't quite tell if he's got, I don't think he does have the slipstream ahead, but he's rallying. So we're coming here again in an infield. I'm going to start taking some pretty aggressive lines, giving myself options to make moves. If he slips up at all, we'll go right by and try to fill that gap in there, and then maybe he can follow me through. We can plug in a hole in that slipstream, it could help all of us. But he is getting on with it fairly well. That gap that he's got to P2, or P4 rather, is about the same size as it was when it was initially created through that mistake, but let's just get a good corner here on Cafe Corner. And got a good run up the hill, slipstream, sticking pretty close to Ivan, and behind, it looks like I've broken the slipstream from behind. So, if nothing else, Ivan and I are running away from the pursuing pack. Yeah, 1.2 into the Senna S. In the beginning of this race, my goal is, again, I'm shredding tires, so I'm not trying to save fuel much. I am doing a couple little short shifts here and there, trying to stay in the slipstream when I can. No sense in running up the back of somebody if you're not going to make a move and have to hit the brakes. Uh, for instance, like coming into the lake's descent here, uh, I'm going to shift early to sixth because uh, I don't want to catch him in the corner. It's going to slow us both down. Hooking that pretty well there that time, and you can see how much just that gained me. That breaking point is so important. Okay, so again, coming into the infield where I feel fast, there is a good size gap there now. And even though it's early, lap three at this point, because my strategy is a sprint, I'm starting to think I might need to get by as soon as possible. If you got to put the elbows out a little bit, bang some doors. I'd rather not, but as you can see, it's getting kind of close. We nearly nudge him there. It's kind of tricky. It's right right in a pre peculiar spot. Do I make a move or not? We have been caught from behind there by at least two cars. Maybe the, the McLaren as well. Down towards Cafe Corner. Again, just need to really be nailing this exit because this is the uphill section. This is where my car is going to feel the lack of power. Coming very close to Ivan there back on the slipstream again I have no choice to make any sort of move um, on the Jaguar on this straight um, unless I got really sandy with it at the at the first corner into the center S but just looking at the gap kind of holding in there not losing places but we're getting on to lap four gonna send it up a little deep alongside I want him to start seeing me in his mirrors a little bit He's obviously set a faster qualifying pace than me, so there's no question that he can be faster. But I'm going to need him to do that now. <laughs> Coming down the opposite straight. Still firmly in the slipstream. Adjusting my braking points a little bit since I'm carrying a little more speed than I'm used to doing on my own with this toe. Not quite broken away yet back there. Maybe. They're coming side by side up into this section, so that's good. That'll slow them down a little bit. There is some battling going on back there. It looks as though Ivan and I have caught up to three and four. I'm not exactly sure where that happened. The three guy good exit there. We may we may have a slipstream train of three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten on the back on the uh, front straight going into lap five and from that angle there it looks like we might be able to break away if we can get this cafe corner clean still tucked in the slipstream revving it out even in the slipstream the Jaguar is able to move away it's a perfect car really to have there in front of me Ivan's been a great asset helping save a little bit of fuel as well Past the bleachers. A little bit of battling behind, so we're doing good to stay in a row here. You can see how it kind of works out. Come after the straights, he's been able to build his gap, but by the time we get back here to the infield, I'm able to catch back up. And that's kind of my strategy, but I'm also feeling like I could have maybe gotten by a person or two there, but um, I'm not sure if they would be able to catch me in the straight or not. And coming here into the end of lap five, I do get an actually good run, a little bit better exit. I'm going to stick a nose up. But certainly, outside of the slipstream, um, 
hoping to catch the slipstream from P4, but once Ivan's able to tuck back in there, there's just no hope. Uh, so here I'm going to move back over to the right again and just hope to communicate that I'm not going to try to do anything in turn one. I don't want to get caught behind. Let's just go back. It was just an experiment, <laughs> maybe for future, future moves. Although now would be a good time to make moves also. We have only half a tank of fuel, so the car is fairly light and our rubber is still currently in pretty good condition. It looks like Diggy's rubber is wearing a little bit. Ivan's able to get through. Didn't see exactly where that happened. We're going to pull up really close going into Lake's Descent. See, I just missed that curb there. Might have been able to make a move here had I caught that. Catching him anyway. Really close racing here. <laughs> Coming into the horseshoe. Hook close to the inside. Leader ahead, just glitching. That was P1. I'm looking all around an area where I might be able to get by Diggy. I'm coming not into the pits after this lap, in, uh, the following lap though. Getting around someone before that would be good to make a little bit of a gap. I'm gonna go try it outside here. Accidentally dip two wheels on the grass. Done that plenty of time in practice though. Able to keep the gap. Although in watching the replay, looking at how I can prove, I'm kind of just missing the corners a little bit. I'm not getting around as fast as I could. Although the tires aren't responding as well as they were earlier either coming at the end of lap six. But it looks like we still have the slipstream. And may have a gap behind, I believe. A couple cars into the pit lane early. Interesting. We'll fast forward head here again a little bit. Just trying to keep the slipstream for the straights. And we caught Diggy here. And we're back in it properly hitting our curbs. Hooking on the inside of Horseshoe, and that's the danger of just missing that a little too deep. We're gonna tuck up inside. Should be an easy move, clean. Hold him there, park it on the apex just to make sure he doesn't get his nose back in there. And now I'm back with Ivan. So I was able to gain technically one position, not counting in the people that pitted, because they're the strategies kind of come together as the race progresses, and this is another instance where I'm really planning this time that the race will come back to me. Because with the people fuel saving, their tires will be very worn by the end of the race. And I'm pitting lap seven, doing seven laps with the car at its heaviest, and eight laps, same tire compound, hards, uh, eight laps for the second stint, figuring the car's a little bit lighter uh, that would be a little easier on the tires. Peeling off in a pit lane here, full throttle. Coming in with 37% of fuel, looks like. 37, 36, looks like it's debatable, depending on where you look. Fresh set of rubber tires. Fresh set of hard tires, rather. Of course they're rubber. Fresh set of plastics. Um, here comes the second stage of the race. Now is when my goal is to be super aggressive, but I'm not quite sure with where everybody's strategies are going to pan out, how I'm going to come out here. I just need to remember to be able to keep the head down. We're going to be looking around as the pit lane kind of mirrors sun curve so we can see our what traffic we're approaching. Okay, as we come out, we're in a gap between 13 and 15. We're in P14 right now. Warming the tires up a little bit. Defender up ahead, what we've seen in previous races. We put enough fuel in the car during the pit that we can still wind it out. Uh, we had enough fuel practice that we should be able to come in with about 0%, very near to 0%. But we got to climb out of the hole here. We are in P14. We got a ways to go. Head down. Just poorly timed downshift a second there. Missed the entrance, went a little wide. You can see how much the curbs help just get traction down. We have caught Defender here on our first lap. So assuming he's doing a no-stop, this is what it's going to be like as I come back through a pack of people who are planning on not pitting and their tires are wearing a little bit and they're not winding the car all the way out. G is to pick my way back through, which means I'm going to have to make a lot of moves even to get back to P6. A couple people will be pitting, of course. Coming out of Cafe Corner, I get a good run, and since neither one of us have the slipstream of anyone ahead, I might actually have the ability to get by here. I'm going to look behind. He's out of the slipstream now. I'm going to stay to the left here, minimize track distance. 
I'll look over and see him. So I'm just going to move to the right again, make him have to move back. Even that brief time keeping him out of the slipstream will help him uh, keep a gap that he won't be able to make a move on me here coming into the center S. Just make sure I nail that. Because again, here in these S turns, I'm a little quicker maybe. Riding the curve. Good exit out of sun curve onto the opposite straight. Looking behind, it's just about in the slipstream, but there is some pit traffic coming out, which is great. It's going to distract him just a little bit. He's got some problems of his own, and I don't have to worry about any kind of move coming into Lake's Descent. Looking up nicely with the curb on the inside, on the entrance and the exit. A little bit of a gap. Okay, so it looks like this might actually work. I just have to keep my head down and run really quick, consistent laps when there's no one ahead of me. Try to save a little bit of fuel and a little bit of tires for if I have to be overly aggressive when I catch somebody. Not overly aggressive, but extra aggressive. <laughs> We're fast forwarding through the lap here, just again. Running up to catch that next person, it's a big gap. We have 19 seconds to the leader from here with only five laps left. But there is some battling going on ahead and we are definitely catching. So now we can see P9 and 8 and P7 coming through the infield. Not catching quite as much as I'd hoped through there. I had a little sloppy go of it maybe. Coming out of cafe corner and I've caught the slipstream. Perfect timing. Coming onto the front straight. Here's Ace Hunter might be shifting early a little bit on a no stop. So I'm not quite sure if I should make a move here or not. I'm going to stick my car to the left there and just see how, how this goes. I'm staying over there. I think he's agreed that we can get through this corner quicker if we don't fight each other. I did hold him up a little bit there, but it was kind of odd positioning on this straight. I was too close to tuck into the slipstream uh, and hanging out of it wasn't gaining me any more ground. But even so, a little more cruel to here. We're going to move right to left to right, trying to break that slipstream. I'd rather defend on the straight than going into a corner. Not only is it getting someone out of their slipstream, but you can also throw their timing off a little bit. You might be blocking their view of the cones if they try to follow you to the left and back to the right. And that can help them maybe miss their breaking point a little. So it's all kinds of little mind games to battle not only people in front of you, but behind you. Party time into the infield. Fast forward here again a little bit. Not really quite hitting my best laps um, in open air there. I'm, I'm a little wide. Maybe I'm getting a little over anxious. We are in P8 though. Four laps left. Critical moment here. The Porsche is gonna pull into the pits. It gave us the slipstream up the hill. It slingshot us down the straight. We have a BMW ahead with a little bit of a gap. Properly hit that braking point. Excellent executed Senna S. Over early on the sun curve, letting the curb help us a little bit. Lost it just at the end there. Still pretty good line, good enough that we not only have the slipstream of the Beamer, but we're gaining. And it's time for some real aggression. We're gonna give a little pump fake. He moves over to the right. Up the inside, you do not want to be on the outside there. I sent it a little bit deep. Now I just need to try to break away on this short little uphill straight. And it looks like he may be fuel saving. Again, the Beamer was really good option for fuel saving, I believe, in this race. But coming into the infield up through the horseshoe. And we've about got that gap built enough that we don't have to worry about a move. Back to our racing line if we can. And now you can see we're behind Salient Shrimp in the McLaren, who has also pitted and is on a one-stop strategy. So he's gonna be very aggressive also, and in the McLaren. Kind of surprised to have caught up to the back of a McLaren in the pack. We are in P6, back to where we started. But to get P5, we're gonna need to pass a McLaren, perhaps. Not exactly sure how this is gonna pan out. It's not gonna pan out right here, that's for sure. We're in a bit of a no man's land, not getting any slipstream from ahead, but at least we're not towing anyone along behind us. Nailing all of our apexes and breaking points well enough. Still not quite caught up to this group, but McLaren has caught what I believe is a Sri Rocco. Coming into the horseshoe, he's on the round the outside. Okay. 
More places to gain. I do not want to lose the slipstream of that McLaren. If he gets ahead and away, I need to make a move happen quick. There's a little bit of a bump there. Space opens up in the inside. I'm going to stick to the outside here. Very comfortable on an outside ex entrance to this corner. And if as long as you're still on the outside on the left, you got the inside here. And it's an off-camber left-hander. So who's ever on the outside is going to lose out. Wasn't really any sort of an issue. Looks like that there might be some fuel saving behind it. Oh, that's the VW. Coming out of Cafe Corner, I don't get it great. Neither does the McLaren, which is beneficial. We just have a little bit of a slipstream. Don't know if we'll be able to keep that down the back straight. Looks like just. And we have broken the gap yet again. So we're making up considerable ground here. We're kind of leapfrogging through the pack. We're currently now... We have improved one position. We started in P6. We're in P5. Fairly comfortably. Two laps left. Still trying just to absolutely nail our points. You can see the consistency on the right-hand side there in the lap count is pretty darn good. Particularly for having to go around some people every now and again. The slipstream of the McLaren is helping. Missed. You can see there. Missed the entrance to lake's descent there and then i'm just not able to put the power down early enough that i don't quite pull up on the mclaren as much as i'd like coming into the infield but i still do have the slipstream just a little bit of it a little wide tires are perhaps starting to go off just a touch there's not all the grip which we've been enjoying up to this point just trying to keep it clean minimize the track distance stay on the inside as much as possible let the curves help. We are definitely catching, but the McLaren has not yet been able to get around. The Beamer in front, good defense. He's just parking it on apexes. Here we go. Moving to Cafe Corner, the McLaren puts the car there. Beamer leaves him a little bit of room. I'm going to catch the curb nicely and get it a little tiny run on the Beamer. Stick my nose around the side of him. And he's apparently fuel saving as well. Just hoping to keep the slip. Looks like I'm just about out of the slipstream ahead, but we are gaining still on the BMW behind, so perhaps he is fuel saving as many are. Okay, we're in P4. Last lap. We can see P2. And it does appear that that BMW is fuel saving. So looking in his mirrors and seeing a McLaren with a Subaru caboose is not exactly what he was hoping to see. Trying to stay in that slipstream, stay close, so I can pick off some carry-on uh, remnants of any move that the McLaren makes. Coming into Lake's descent, McLaren absolutely maximizing the track widths there. That's going to give him a good run coming into the horseshoe to make a move. The Beamer to the inside to defend. McLaren decides he's going to go around the outside. Excellent racing. We grab the curb on entrance. And we have caught up a little. I'm not as close as I'd like to be. I have a move on this next corner that I've practiced a lot. We'll try to get it to work. I've never done it from this far back. Early exit. Try to get up alongside. We do, and he moves over to defend last minute. Just notices we've actually got in there. I'll be having that podium. Thank you. Out of the dive, in towards the junction. Hang it to the left to defend just a little bit. We still have the slipstream of the McLaren. P3. Can we get P2? Hooking that curb nicely, trying to get a run. Don't quite have the traction to put it down, as we would have a couple laps ago. And again, catching that McLaren in a straight line, not likely. But it looks like a very comfortable, look at the gap behind. Third place finish from P6. Still burning some fuel, so I had a little bit, tiny, tiny, tiny bit too much. P3, over the line. Look at the spread out field of fuel savers p3 and if i race at this in this lobby i'm quite happy about this was a one and done for me today it just worked out perfectly i could have possibly made a move in the beginning i uh, could have been a little more aggressive before the first pit to get by ivan perhaps i'm not sure what would have happened if i had been able to get by there but sailing trip coming along and being able just to jump on his tail Follow him up to a... Yeah, I think he went from P7 to P2. I went from P6 to P3. 
third place clean race 156 points that's the most points that we've earned in a race this season and maybe ever actually so our standings before the race we were fifth for subaru 235 in the north american region did our race got our points to 419 and after calculating over the evening found out in the morning we got to p3 and 164th in north america but looking at the standings we're tied for p3 fairly comfortably though i suspect apollo will continue gaining He's also been in the Subaru for a number of seasons, as has Icicles 5. They're both on a bit of a tear. Popping over quickly to look at next week's race will be a Group 3 race at Dragon Trail Gardens 2. Going to have to do some testing, see if I want to do that one. We will be doing Nürburgring in Group 4, of course. I've had some other ideas about some video projects I'd like to do, so we may be peppering in a couple of those. But that concludes our video today. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, mask up, stay safe.